welcome back to Watches and Wonders. This is our last day at the fair, and what a week it has been. I hope you've enjoyed following our, our coverage, and it's given you ideas if you're coming this weekend. Now, in today's show, I was picking up Mr. and Mrs. Chalet from Louis Monet downtown in the World Tempest taxi. Geordie was doing his daily booth tour at Bell & Ross. And Brees, he was at Tag Heuer interviewing the CEO, Frederick Arno, with his fishbowl of questions. Suzanne was at Patek Philippe, checking out one of their novelties with the showcase. And we're going to join also Jean-Christophe Tenier, who's with his VIP members of the Fine Watch Club at Mont Blanc today. And we're going to finish with our guest of the day, CEO Walter Ribarga from Cirrus. in the taxi this morning in downtown Geneva. Today I'm wearing the uh, Memory Spirit, which is the original Memories in a 40 millimeter case. What about you, Michaela? <coughs> what are you wearing? Uh, yes, I'm a beautiful watch for lady. Star dance, a beautiful combination of a um, mother peer and uh, meteorites. This is distracting me. Yes, sorry. sorry. <laughs> now I'm teasing. I'm teasing. It's beautiful. Now let's go over to Jordi and the Daily Booth tour, which is at Bell and Ross this morning. Hi, Sophie. So today I am taking you to the Bell and Ross booth, and I am joined by Marie Laure Richard, Marketing and Communication Director. So, Laure, tell me, uh, what is the theme of this year's Bell & Rose booth? Actually, this year is the first year of Bell & Rose booth, you know, it's our first participation uh, to Watches & Wonder. Mm -hmm. And the theme this year is all about the VRX5. Yes. Uh, actually, you know that uh, the, our latest uh, release, we launched uh, this watch end of last year, and it's really a step for us because, you know, it's moving World manufacturer movement. Mm -hmm. uh, this watch uh, is, you know, like a very unique design and uh, an exceptional case with inside the Kennedy movement. And I can see that the booth is very pure, yeah. very minimalist. Yeah. It has its, its effects, of course. But why did you decide to make it that way? That's how Bell and Ross is actually. You know, Bell and Ross is really about. Uh, uh, Functions that drive design, and it's all about you know the legibility, the functionality. And if you look, you know, like even our car range, you know, like our different watches, it's really quite minimalistic. Yes. It was quite obvious, you know, for Bruno, who is actually our co one of the co-founders yes. of the company and is the artistic director, who draws all that to have this kind of design for the booth. Well. It's very like well done because like this huge watch, you can see the, the movement is like, it's very impressive. Yeah. And you feel very, very small next to it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your explanations and uh, good luck for the rest of the week. Back to the studio. Today's contender for the fishbowl of questions is Frédéric Arnaud at Tag Heuer. Let's go over to Brees and see how that goes. Frédéric Arnaud, you are the CEO of Tagoyer. You're welcoming uh, us uh, on your booth. Uh, Thank you for coming watch, on our booth. During Watch Reason Under. I'm going to ask you to pick up three questions. Three questions. Blue one, red one, and one yellow, yellow one. one. Okay. Maybe we start with the red one. Let's do it. If you could switch jobs with someone inside the Tag Heuer manufacturer, whose job would interest you the most? Hmm. Probably, I would say, uh, Head of product. Head of product. Yeah, because nice. I think it's uh, one of the most interesting things about uh, our industry, about the brand, uh, and it's the part I have the most fun with 
yes. uh, working with the designers, with the engineers, uh, in the factories also, because sometimes we have to work directly with them uh, to find solutions. We can see yes. that. Okay, blue. If your manufacturer was on fire and you could save just one watch, which one would you take? Hmm. Probably I would take the 1969 Monaco Steve McQueen. Actually, we have three of them in the museum, mm -hmm. but I would choose one of the three. I don't know which one of the three, but probably one of the three. Well, we'll yeah. see, well, hopefully, we, it won't happen. Which watch do you wear the most? Mm. I always go with the latest watch that we released. Mm -hmm. So right now, I have the Glassbox uh, Chrono. Um, I wear also very often the Solagraph, mm -hmm. but since we launched it uh, in January, uh, I would say, yeah, these are the two. Thank you very much, Great. Frederic, and we wish uh, Carrera a beautiful 16th anniversary. Thank you, Brice. Have fun. Suzanne was at Patek Philippe earlier doing a showcase with one of their top novelties. Let's join her to see what she's doing. Don't say that we don't treat you right, because we've actually been saving one of the best for last. Because here we are, as you can see, at the Patek Philippe booth at Watches and Wonders, and I have in my hands here one of the star watches from Patek Philippe this year, the reference 5261R, the Aquanaut Luce annual calendar. Those of you who are familiar with Patek Philippe may be thinking to myself, I know the annual calendars of Patek Philippe and there's something a little different about this one. What could it be? Well, you have sharp eyes, my friend, because uh, I'll just point it out right here without making you wait any longer. Normally, with the annual calendar references in Patek Philippe, all the models have the moon phase display at the bottom of the dial. Whereas here, in this reference, we have it in a rather unusual position for a Patek Philippe annual calendar, right up here at 12 o'clock. Now, onto the dial, we have this iconic and highly recognizable Aquanaut pattern in a blue-gray shade with these rose gold applied numerals and baton style hands, all with white luminescent coating, as you will see if I just turn on the UV lights for a second. Of course, we have a integrated blue-gray composite strap with the Aquanaut pattern as well, reflecting the design of the dial and turning it over. We have the beautiful self-winding 26-330 SQALU caliber, of course, in-house by Patek Philippe. Now for Jean-Christophe Tenier and the Fine Watch Club at Mont Blanc earlier today. Jean-Christophe from the Fine Watch Club. I'm here at Mont Blanc discussing about the fantastic Minerva novelties. It's a chronograph working in a very different way. I'm here with Michel, a craftsman from Minerva in Villeray. Very nice guy. He's going to explain us. Oh, you are really nice. That's true. <laughs> and explain us more about that fantastic watch uh, and how it works specifically. You have a wonderful moment, 3021 Minerva, and normally you do the function with a pressure. Okay, start, stop, and back to zero. And the incre incredible novelty for this year is you have the chronograph with out. Pressure. Without pressure, which is really the novelty. Usually you have two pressures above and below the crown. For once, it's... How does it work? Show me. You can do the function with the bezel. It, it's a very incredible. Start, stop, and return. And return, which is really unique in the industry. Start, and stop, and return. Superb. I think uh, I encourage you to discover that watch and that piece in the boutiques uh, whenever you want, pretty soon. But uh, hurry up. And our guest of the day is Walter Ribalga, who's joining us on the World Tempest sofa. So let's catch up with him. Hi, Walter. It's uh, lovely to have you on our World Tempest sofa at Watches and Wonders. Um, tell me what's new with Sirius this, this year. Hi, Sophie. It's always a pleasure to be with you. What is new is um, we uh, extended our line of uh, GMT retrograde, Klepsis GMT retrograde, by giving some, putting some colors, um, which is in the trend right now. 
um, <clears throat> and improving also the movement, uh, decoration. And um, the new thing is that we have uh, a, a metal bracelet. Uh, oh, that's nice. I see you're launching. wearing it. You're yeah. wearing it. Can we take a look? Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. And this blue as well. Yeah. We call it ocean blue, but maybe it would yeah. be electric blue. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever. people want to, want and, to call and, it. And a very nice bracelet in titanium. Wow. Which, which keeps the watch light, but, uh, but it's solid, titanium grade five, polished and uh, matte. Beautiful. It matches very well this uh, this model. Yes. Now, one thing I've always uh, appreciated with Sirius is how user-friendly your timepieces are. That they're, they're not too complicated to operate, even though they are extremely complicated within. Is that important to you? That is very important. Um, in my experience uh, in, in the watch industry, there is nothing more important than if you make complication, that it has to be simple to use because um, consumers don't want to have problems with, uh, with complications that they uh, have to read. The, yeah, the manual, the, the, the like manual, 100 pages long. The manual every day, every time they use it. Yeah. And uh, so that's a focus we have uh, in the development with Jean-Francois Mojon uh, of, new, of new models. Well, I wish you good luck for the weekend Thank and you. all the swarms of people that are coming to see Thank you. you and um, have a wonderful rest of the day. So thank you so much for watching this week. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. Um, I would like to say a special thank you to everybody who's made this, this TV show possible from all my colleagues in front of the camera and behind the camera and who are editing. And also a special thank you goes to Pegasus Automotive Group in Neon for lending me the most beautiful car for the week. It's going to be very painful for me to give that back. We'll be back for Geneva Watch Days in August. So until then, have a wonderful day.